What's good family? Welcome back to the channel. In this video right here, we have worst friend. Biggie's mother reveals how much Biggie hated Diddy. So now this is actually a common misconception right here. This is the first time I'm actually seeing this because most people believe that Biggie and Diddy were actually best friends. They were business partners and they were associates. You know what I'm saying? But it seems as if the mom is coming out saying how Biggie actually hated Diddy. Now this means a lot when it comes to the theory of people believing that Diddy had killed Biggie. Because during the time when Biggie died, that was when uh, Biggie actually left the record label that Diddy owned, which would mean that Diddy's no longer making money from Biggie's music. And we all know how big Biggie was when he was making music. He was making a lot of money and he was doing his thing. So let's hear what she has to say in this video right here. And let's draw a conclusion by the end of the video. If the math is math, then the math is math, then, man. You know, some of the, the, the some of his associates, I still want to strangle them. Biggie's still always clowning. Biggie's mother, Valetta Wallace, has revealed her son's true feelings towards Diddy, and they are not good. During an interview with The Breakfast Club, Valetta revealed that she always felt like strangling Biggie's associates. You know, some of the, the, the some of his associates, I still want to strangle them. To add on to this, Diddy's former bodyguard, Gene Deal, also talked about how much Biggie hated Diddy. In a recent interview, Gene said that Biggie and Diddy weren't as close as Diddy portrays and that Biggie was aware that Diddy was robbing him. That close because Big used to always clown him. You understand? You know, but Big needed him just as much as he needed Big. Mm. And I think that it was basically just a business type situation. But they were cool. But Puff had robbed Big and Big was robbing Puff. Gene also revealed that Biggie was planning on getting his publishing rights back from Diddy. Puff was robbing him and had robbed him out of his pub publishing and his marketing. Puff seen how Big learned how to put his publishing in other people's name to stop him from getting the money that he was he was owed. But Big had to play the game because Big wanted to get his publishing back and his marketing that he had sold out to Puff. Gene also claimed that the late rapper had made moves to leave Bad Boy for a little bit deal worth more than $60 million. Deal said he saw Biggie's Bad Boy contract when he had to watch over Diddy's briefcase during a flight. It outlined Big's earnings in increments of $250,000 but left publishing income in Puff's possession. When he asked Biggie about it, the rapper allegedly told him about his new deal and all the money he'd make. Yeah, Big had a contract, uh, and what happened was when me and Puff rode on a plane coming back down there, uh, Puff gave me his his briefcase and everything like that. Like, yo, here, like me carry this shit. Say, all right, motherfucker, I got five hours, six hours of this thing. Let me see what's in the briefcase. And then at the end of the contract, I was skimming through it. At the end of the contract said, oh, we're going to discuss about you getting your publishing and your marketing back. And they, I think the contract was for so many years for like 62 million. It, it comes out to like $62 million. Fans have commented about this, with one fan saying, Everybody knew Big would leave. Big out grew Puff. Puff gave Big his break. But Puff could never be on the level without Big. If Puff could not have Big, nobody can. not Another fan added, Remember when Big's daughter said she wasn't invited to the Bad Boy reunion tour. Says a lot about Diddy Puff. A third fan wrote, I always thought it was weird that Biggie started his label outside of Bad Boy, and whenever he spoke of Puff, it was always about business, not personal like the way he spoke of other people like Jay-Z. Another fan added, Biggie and Diddy definitely weren't as close as everybody thought. Puffy never shows up at any event or tribute related to Biggie or anything. In a separate interview, Gene revealed that Diddy lied to Biggie's mother about not knowing him because he knew that Gene would expose him and reveal what happened on the night of Biggie's death. He mumbled my name, but he told her he didn't know me. The reason he probably did that was because he knew that I was going to tell Ms. Wallace all what happened. Fans have called out Diddy for pretending to care about Biggie with one particular fan stating, What's sick is that Puff still to this day acts like he was a good person to Big. I really feel like he set this man up. The same man who helped him get to where he is now. Trust nobody. Another fan act. I mean, why would Diddy act like he was a bad person? I don't think anyone really admits that. But it, I find it interesting that Puffy isn't addressing anything Gene is saying. It's been years now. Gene is speaking facts. The third fan wrote, I remember after Biggie died, 
Miss Wallace didn't want Diddy to exploit her son anymore because back then Diddy was faithfully talking about how much he missed Bay and was involved in everything regarding Bay that includes the celebrations, the mentions on social media, just like how Diddy was doing Kim. And Gene is right, all that be propaganda. And I think Miss Wallace didn't want her son's legacy to be exploited like that anymore. I also think that is why Diddy barely mentions why he didn't go to Bake's 50th celebration in New York. Valletta Wallace has spoken about how she believed Diddy used her son for his personal gains in her book titled Biggie, where she says, I'm glad my son does not have to witness that the very people that he thought he could ride and die with wouldn't think twice about using his mother. I am glad that he's not here to see how they have used his image and his name. I believe Sean loved my son after he was dead. I used to tell Christopher all the time not to trust Sean. What's more, wow. Valletta also wrote about how much money he received when he signed on with the label. The truth is, Christopher accepted the illusion of a friend and mentor for about $25,000. That's the amount Puffy lured my son with. That was a lot of money for Christopher back then as a 19-year-old. He had never yeah. seen that much at one time in his life, Wallace wrote. It was enough money to make my son believe that Puffy was ready to do anything for him. It was enough to buy a blind love and loyalty. In addition to this, Biggie's mom has criticized how the investigation of her son's murder has been handled over the years, and with good reason. In an interview with the Daily Mail, Valletta said that she hurts every single day knowing that she will never see her son again and that his killer is still at large. The matriarch of hip-hop revealed that she and LAPD detectives investigating the murder know who is responsible for her son's death, but a conspiracy prevents the case from ever being solved. I have a very good idea who murdered Christopher, and I genuinely believe that the LAPD know exactly who did too, she said. They've done their investigation, but they just refuse to move forward. I don't know why they haven't arrested who was involved. It seems to me that it's one giant conspiracy, and someone is definitely being protected somewhere down the line. There's no closure for me until that murderer is behind bars and sentenced. There has been a lot of speculation on Diddy's involvement in Biggie's murder. Some people actually believe that Diddy was the intended target and not Biggie. This speculation was sparked by Gene who claimed that he has evidence what? that suggests Diddy was the real target on the night Biggie was killed. According to Deal, Diddy had a hit on him, which was meant to take place after a party at the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles, where Biggie was scheduled to perform. Deal alleges that Diddy's security team received a tip-off about the hit and moved Diddy to a hotel, leaving Biggie behind at the museum. The hitman allegedly mistook Biggie for Diddy and opened fire on his SUV as it left the museum. Deal's claims are not new. In fact, Jaguar Wright, a neo-soul singer and former member of The Roots, has also made claims about Diddy's involvement in the death of the rapper. In a recent interview with the Hip Hop Uncensored podcast, Wright alleged that Diddy had a role in Biggie's murder and that she had heard about it from people who were close to the situation. Jaguar revealed that Diddy had a motive for wanting Biggie dead as he saw the rapper as a threat to his own success in the music industry. Jaguar also talked about how Diddy benefited off Biggie's death. Puffy has been making money off of Biggie's name for longer than Biggie was alive. People keep forgetting he hadn't turned 25 yet. He was still 24 when he died. It's been That's over wild. 25 years. Clearly, a Biggie Smalls verse is very valuable. So then what the fuck happened to the commission? What happened to that album? It was recorded. It was being mixed and mastered Upon Biggie's death, it was supposed to have came out that summer after Biggie's album because Biggie's album was slated. He died a week and a half before his album came out. Then the commission was supposed to come out and that was supposed to be his exit from Bad Boy. And then starting his own company. Puffy has been making money on that boy's name longer than he could live. It supported all of Bad Boy. That's real, yo. Yeah. The more money you make, the more problems you get. The Notorious Bake was one of the most crazy. figures in hip-hop history. His untimely death on March 9, 1997, sent shockwaves through the music industry and beyond, and remains one of the most controversial and mysterious cases in modern history. Biggie was born in Brooklyn, New York in 1972, and quickly made a name for himself in the city's underground rap scene. He signed with Sean Diddy Combs label, Bad Boy Records, in 1992, and released his debut album. Ready to Die in 1994. The album was a critical and commercial success, establishing Biggie as one of the most talented and influential rappers of his generation. But despite his success, Biggie's life was plagued by controversy and violence. He was involved in a heated feud with rapper Tupac Shakur, who was also gunned down in 1996. Many wow. believed that the two murders were connected and that they were the result of an ongoing feud between rival hip-hop groups on the East and West Coasts. 
On the night of his death, Biggie attended a party hosted by Vibe magazine in Los Angeles. After leaving the party, he was riding in the front seat of a GMC Suburban when a vehicle pulled up beside him and opened fire. Biggie was hit four times, including a fatal shot to the chest. He was rushed to Cedars Sinai Medical Center, where he was pronounced dead less than an hour later. The circumstances surrounding Biggie's death remain unclear to this day. Despite a massive investigation and multiple leads, the case went unsolved for nearly a decade. Many theories and rumors have circulated over the years, including allegations of police corruption and involvement by rival gangs. Some even believe that Biggie's death was orchestrated by people within the music industry itself. In the years following his death, Biggie's legacy only grew stronger. He became one of the most celebrated and yeah. influential figures in hip-hop history, and his music continued to inspire a new generation of artists. But for his family, friends, and fans, the pain of his loss never fully subsided. Valetta Wallace became an advocate for justice and worked tirelessly to find out who was responsible for that's, her son's murder. She publicly... It's really crazy how, like, you can hear a Biggie song, like, someone could throw in a Biggie song and, like, we could know the words, at least me, you know what I'm saying, know the words, and it's still, like, good. Like, Biggie was really a good artist. Waited for anyone with information about the case to come forward and cooperate with the authorities. In addition to seeking justice for her son, Valetta also took on the responsibility of managing his estate and preserving his legacy. She founded the Christopher Wallace Memorial Foundation, which provides educational opportunities for children in Brooklyn, where her son grew up. Despite the lack of resolution in the case, Biggie's impact on the music industry and popular culture is undeniable. He paved the way for countless artists who followed in his footsteps, and his influence can be heard in the work of everyone from Jay-Z to Kendrick Lamar. That's it for today's video, folks. Bye. Hey, guys. Comment down below your thoughts. I do want to make a quick mention. You do not have to take any information in this video as facts, but if the math is math, then the math is math, then like I said in the beginning of the video. And since you did watch this point of the video, make sure you do like the video, subscribe, turn post notifications. I'm going to catch you guys in the next one. This thing we going to catch me in the next one. Peace. I love you.